Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings. Today I thought I'd go back to some first principles. And first principles for me means paper and pencil. I like pencils. You can see here I've got a fair collection, various different types which go back for donkey's years. So I've got uh, a Kent pencil, I've got um, what's this? Hardmuth from Austria, L and C Hardmuth, in fact. I've got a Kingsway drawing pencil, which must be from the 1930s or 40s. But I've also got one left of a nice old Faber Graf von Faber Castell, beautifully made pencil, quite large in the hand, and various others. And what's interesting about pencils is that you're talking about something that's a piece of wood, normally cedar I think, some graphite and clay. And basically if you've got all of those three components you have a pencil. This happens to be one of my favourite pencils, it's a Tombow Mono 100. And the reason why it's one of my favourites is it's got a beautiful black um, lacquer almost paint job on the outside of it. They always come like this, completely unsharpened, but this lays down a really nice black line even though it's only an HB. But that's a brilliant start, but of course if you wanted an ideal pencil you'd want to have some means of sharpening it as well, because it's pretty much useless without that. And you'd need an eraser, a rubber of some sort, to remove those lines that go in the wrong place. And ideally, when you've used your pencil a fair bit and it gets to be a little bit small to handle comfortably, some means of making it longer would be really useful. And I think I've got three ideal ways of covering every aspect for the perfect pencil. And they're called, strangely enough, Perfect Pencils from Faber-Castell and Graf von Faber-Castell. So I'm going to talk about these a little bit now because there's a bit of a story behind them. Hope you find it interesting. So here we are back again. Right, what I'm going to do now is give you a little story about the background behind these pencils and I'm going to explain how they work and what it, I think is so good about them. So there's actually a fourth model which is the junior version which is a nice very very cost-effective perfect pencil at only three pounds for the whole thing and then you go up in price fairly significantly. The first one I got was one of these and just to look at this in a little bit more detail You'll see it's got Faber-Castell, I don't know if the camera's picking that up perfectly, but it's got Faber-Castell on the very top there. It's got this nice, very strong clip that will attach to anything and it won't fall out. That is very important. And then you have a pencil with a rubber on the end. The thing that about the perfect pencil is that the cap becomes an extension so that as the pencil gets smaller and smaller because obviously as you sharpen it it will reduce in size then suddenly you have this potential of still using it. So this is a Tombow pencil that I've been using for some time and as you can see it's still perfectly usable if I want to just because it's got this pencil extender cap. The other thing that's good about the Perfect Pencil though is of course the obvious missing item. You have an eraser, you have an extender and you have a pencil. What you need is a sharpener. And so the Perfect Pencil has a delightful sharpener that will sharpen your pencil while you're out and about. Now this style of Perfect Pencil is from Faber-Castell Design I believe it's called. And 
It's a reasonably priced pencil, I think, for what it is, by which I mean it's not as hideously expensive as this model. I had one of these 10-12 years ago and I was over the moon with it. It was a delightful pencil, I kept it with me all the time and unfortunately when I was in an office doing an interview someone obviously picked it up and walked off with it and I was devastated, I was really angry and I thought I'm going to have to replace it and as luck would have it some royalties came in and they weren't too bad and I thought I could get one of those really nice ones instead because I love the looks of these. It's the slimness of the extender, is pencil extension, is rather attractive I think compared to the aluminium rather bulkier version on the design model. It's obviously very very shiny, it's been beautifully manufactured in Germany as it says on the back here, which I've no doubt the camera will not be able to pick up but um, trust me it says made in Germany. It's got the Faber-Castell logo just above the clip here. It does have an eraser but it's hidden in this nicely gleaming cap. The eraser is replaceable. The pencil too is replaceable and the lovely thing is that under here is another nice beautifully made pencil sharpener. So you have the sharpener, you have the extender, you have the pencil and inside there you've got the eraser. That is what Graf von Faber-Castell believes makes up a perfect pencil and I couldn't possibly disagree with them. These are delightful. What I love about this is the looks, I love the weight, I love positive action when you pull that out and put it back in. It's a nice distinct click. I love the size of the pencil because it is considerably fatter than the average pencil. It's absolutely beautiful. Now let's talk about what I don't like. The first thing I don't like is I had no idea when I bought it that ordinary sized pencils are far too small and they will not stay in the extender. You have to get fat size pencils to fit in. Now my Tombows will just, it still feels rather loose. You can't see perhaps there but that's not a perfect fit by any means. So you are restricted to using only Faber-Castell's own pencils. Now why is that a, a slight problem? Well I'm just looking at my bit of paper here. The Faber-Castell perfect pencil of this type is 140 pounds. Yes, I said 140 pounds. <sighs> that hurts just to think of it. The pencils are quite reasonably priced at only 33 pounds for five of them. So a wooden pencil is six pounds 60 each. Six pounds 60 each. Now I like these pencils, they are quite nice. They have a lovely size they look gorgeous, but let me just put this into perspective. These are, I think, £1.50, maybe £2, Tombow, Mono 100. And I'm afraid, I think it is infinitely nicer to use than the Faber or Graf von Faber-Castell. The other thing I have to mention about this is this is my second one, because my first one fell out of my pocket because this clip is very beautiful, it's very elegant but it is not very tight and it takes little to m allow the pencil to just slide straight out. If I can demonstrate with a little bit of paper here, it clips on and it slides off really really easily. If you've got a newer pencil that is quite long and you put this in your pocket it's liable to fall out. I know that because mine did. That was an extremely expensive walk with the dogs. I was, I hesitate to admit it, I was tickling my son at the beginning of the walk. His fist caught my shirt pocket at some point. I know, I remember him doing that and a couple of hours later I realised I didn't have a pencil in my pocket anymore. 
£140 down the pan. And I got this um, as a replacement because I did love it. But since buying it, I've really taken it out, I think, once, maybe twice. Because it's too much money and I can't justify the risk of losing it again. So this, I think, is going to go on eBay fairly soon because I never use it. It is sad. You shouldn't have things that you're never going to use. So what I bought last week was this. The old style perfect pencil, which I absolutely love still. Whoops. This is the Faber-Castell pencil that comes with it. Now these pencils are considerably cheaper because they're £1.62 each. They arrive about that long, I believe. At £1.62 for a pencil is expensive, but these actually are much more the quality, I think, of Motombo. They feel nice in the hand, it's a similar sort of diameter, and it fits in the cap perfectly, very snugly. You've got the pencil sharpener at the far end, obviously, but this clip does not give way. It does not release. That is a strong clip, and this thing will not fall out of your pocket, which is rather important. I find that um, I can walk about with this full of the confidence that it's not going to disappear. And the other thing is that this is still expensive. Let's not be silly. It's £29.44 from Cult Pens. Um, I know that. I bought it last week from them. It was expensive. It's not a cheap device. But this, unless someone nicks this one as well, is going to be with me for the rest of my life. It's going to be in my pocket almost every single day. It'll be ideal for taking out and sketching, for making notes when I need to. It's just a delightful pencil to have around. Let's just have a quick look at the, the bottom of the market. There is the junior version, which basically is a great deal more bulbous and it has a much cheaper pencil. Um, I haven't got one of them, so I can't show it, but hey-ho. This is my daughter's, so I can't use it and demonstrate it to you, but never mind. I'll just get the pencil sharpener out. It's exactly the same as the one in the Faber-Castell design version. Doesn't have any gold lettering or anything, but it does have the Faber-Castell logo at the top. Wonderful. And it has the same clip, which is nice and strong and robust. This is a delightful pencil to have. The extender works really well. When the pencil gets really low, it's still going to work nicely. And the great thing is, this type is only £10. And if you want to get the pencils that have the rubber on the end designed for this, then that's three for £4.80, I think, which works out perfectly reasonable. But there is one limiter with this. And there's one thing that makes this pencil, Perfect Pencil, stand out, out of all of them. And that is, this one will take a variety of sizes of pencil. So my Tombows fit in there. Um, even the little small 9000 Faber-Castells fit in there. With this, the 9000s fit in fine, but if you want to get a Tombow to fit, it will just, but it's a hell of a tight squeeze. So, I don't know. It's entirely up to you, obviously. From my money, I think that... Well, I'm very, very happy that I bought one of these. It takes a variety of different pencils. I think it looks good. It certainly does the job because it's got all of the aspects of what I need. And in days to come, perhaps my favourite Castell pencils will you will wear out or I'll have worn them all the way down to a stub which you know you can use this even when it's a very very short pencil indeed you do get the absolute maximum out of every pencil you put in it and I think it's going to be lasting me for a good many years to come this sadly is going to get sold it'll go back this will go back in my daughter's desk where she can enjoy it for many years, hopefully. Um, and that is about it, really. The perfect pencil. What do you think? Do you reckon these are ridiculously over overpriced and I got entirely the wrong idea? Or do you think 
this actually is a better option. I think this makes a good option if you're going to be using it in an office, have it on your desk all the time, but um, it's that clip that really perturbed me. That and the fact that you can't use a standard pencil in it. You have to spend out quite a lot more to get a Faber-Castell special type of pencil for it. So there you go. The Faber-Castell and Graf von Faber-Castell perfect pencils. I know which one I like best, um, having just bought it again, but you may have a different view. I'll be interested to know what you think. So if you want to send some comment, please write in the box down below. Please do subscribe and like it and do all those good things. Share it with your friends because it makes it much more worthwhile when I know someone's watching the things. And apart from that, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Cheers.